Cindy Davis Evans of The Cindy Davis Show. My guest today is a talented producer, songwriter, and vocalist from the R&B Grammy-nominated group, The Gap Band. The group rose to popularity in the early 80s with chart-topping hits like Burn Rubber On Me, Outstanding, and Going In Circles. That's just the name of food. Welcome recording artist, Mr. Dorian Paul. Thank you so much for joining me. No problem. I'm honored. I'm honored. How are you? How are you? Well, you know, uh, according to what's going on and uh, some of the other trivia that mm -hmm. we're having to go through at this particular time, I would say that I'm thankful first mm -hmm. to, number one, just be alive, that God allowed me to have one more day. And uh, the other is I'm concerned. Yes. Yeah. What are you concerned about? I mean, well, we're going through this pandemic. Yeah. So, you know, how are you handling that? Well, it's been tremendous on me personally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, um, I've, I've, I've done a lot of uh, agonizing over personal loss. Uh, I, I lost a nephew, a sister, a co-writer of my music, and then uh, my son, uh, has had a tremendous car accident that uh, had brain trauma and uh, is pretty much fighting to get back to himself. And all of this was un-COVID related and happened in a span of five months. Now, oh my God. you take that mm -hmm. and you put that with COVID mm -hmm. and you got to be, you got to have God all up in you to be able to, to deal with this and still have a positive attitude. So praise God for one more day. Yes, praise God. I am so sorry to hear about your loss. My condolences to you and the family. Yes. And we will definitely keep your son in our prayers. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Because uh, I think you. that's what we need, you know, we need, you know, to we need to continue to pray during yes. this time. Everybody is going through something, you know. Yeah. And, you know, during this time. Yeah. Uh, for that to happen to you all at once. Yeah. You know, within the time frame of five months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, so how are you dealing with it? Through prayer? Um, uh, through going I, to church? Gospel? Yeah. Music? I've got a, I've got an abnormally beautiful fan base. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, I, I've got, they, they are just, just abnormally wonderful mm -hmm. and have lifted me up, mm -hmm. uh, lifted my family up, mm -hmm. uh, kept us, kept us in their prayers. And I'm so thankful, you know, to my parents for introducing me to Jesus the Christ. I'm so thankful. And they let me know that that particular acquaintance was going to be one that I was going to need all of the days I was going to be here. I just didn't know it was going to be that intens intensified. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, just, yeah I didn't I, know that, but praise yeah, God. You know, we never know what we have to go through in, in this journey. I, you know, I don't see how people go through anything without that foundation of Christ. And yeah. I think that's yeah. one of the one of the wonderful gifts that a parent can give a child is to introduce them to the Christ. Oh, wow. that is the best. That is, that is the no best. That is <laughs> there is no present better than that. That's <laughs> right. Yes, I agree indeed. with that. I agree so, with I'm, that. so I am just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, number one, I, I'm, listen, I'm trying to figure out how a little old peon like me get a chance to be on your show. I'm just, I'm, oh, I'm, listen I'm, to you. I'm excited about this. I'm telling Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so honored. So honored to have you. And, you know, mm. I've been a fan of the Gap Bands for for a long time. And, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just so amazing. So speaking of the Gap Band and speaking of your, your music career, mm -hmm. um, how did you get uh, to be a member of the Gap Band? Now, that's a funny story. Yeah, uh, funny stories too. <laughs> that's a funny story. So, uh, okay, I had a regional record out that I put I put out, uh, and um, 
it was, you know, at that particular time, there was no internet, there was no all of this independent labels, there was none of that stuff going on. You just basically took a shot. If you weren't with a major label, you would you would literally have to go if you weren't able to uh, hire what they call a record promoter to take your record around to see if you could get it played oh, in uh, at written radio stations, you know? Yeah. So so how about your boy? Yeah. He put on a disguise, right? Mm -hmm. He put a disguise on, a big hat, some fake, uh, they, back then they called them poke chop sideburns. <laughs> 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 I put some poke chop sideburns on and some sunglasses yeah. and I went from Houston to Little Rock, Arkansas, and circled back through Dallas, Louisiana, and that type of thing, being my own record promoter, right? Wow. I went to a station called KKDA in, in Dallas, Texas. It's actually like in Grapevine, I think it is. Um, mm -hmm. And at that time, there was this small radio host there named Tom Joyner. <laughs> yeah, the wow, fabulous Tom Joyner wow. was there, and he was doing this thing uh, that, back then that he called the fly job. He yeah. would do Dallas in the morning, he'd do Chicago in, in the evening. So anyway, make a long story short, I'd introduced that, that I, I gave him that record, uh, and, it, and it took off. He, he broke my record for me, that single. It was called Stack to the T, okay. and he broke that record in that area for me. And as a result of that, then I needed to go in and try to create an album right quick, you know, to support the single and hopefully, you know, get discovered by a major label. Well, Charlie Wilson of the Gap Band, a lot of people, I got to distinguish this. Uncle Charlie Uncle is Charlie. the same Charlie Wilson mm. that was the lead singer of the Gap Band then. Yeah. And... Uh, he was going around on a, what they call a promotional tour. We had a radio, you know, you would go around on radio promotional tours then if you had a good record. Mm -hmm. So he was, he, he was, he flew into New Orleans. I was recording in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And um, someone, uh, that's this guy named Carlos Beck was the program director there. When Charlie came to the radio station, he told him about me mm -hmm. recording in Baton Rouge and that I had some great stuff and back then they had this thing called a cassette tape. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave Charlie my cassette tape and uh, Charlie, as usual, you know, when you're a big star, people always run up on you with their music and all that, right? Oh, but yeah, since this came good. from a program yeah. director, it was important, you know? So he got the tape, he put it in his pocket and they got back in the limousine, they on their way back to New Orleans. And, he, and Charlie said that, they were laughing and joking about something and he hit his chest and it hurt because he forgot he put that cassette in his chest and uh -huh. in, in his pocket you know so he took the cassette out he was like man who's this let me put this thing in here and he put it in and he started listening and he said he listened to the starting of the second song and he turned told the limo uh, driver turn this car around yeah i gotta go back and find out where this guy is yeah. and i carlos told him i was in dallas getting ready to play I got a phone call from that road manager. He said, is this Dorian? I said, yes. He said, I need you to go to Southwest Airlines right now. We paid for you a ticket to come back to Houston. Just like that. And I said, okay, number one, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'm the road manager for the Gap Band. Called Southwest Airlines. We prepaid a ticket for you to come back to Houston and hung up the phone. Oh and I God. said, okay, I called that Southwest Airlines. It was true. I got on the plane, got, flew back to Houston. Back in the day, you know, they could have a sign with your name on it at the gate, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, see, I came out of the oh. out of the thing, my name on this sign, jumped in this big old giant hey. limousine. They took me downtown to the Sheraton is where they were. I met Charlie. He said, hey, man, I love your stuff. I want you to come with me. He said, when? I said, now. I said, can I use your phone? <laughs> <laughs> no, I called my that, brother. It didn't have no cell phones then, you know, as far as what we have now. So yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And it, it happened just like that. And I was from that day, I was with them for 16 years. And he, uh, you were on as a vocalist? Yes, yes. I, I wrote and produced 
and sung background arrangements on five Gapan albums. Wow, amazing. So yeah. how did becoming a member of the Gap Band change your life? Oh my God. Oh, it, it, it changed it like overnight. Uh, but when I say overnight, I don't take that lightly because I had already worked 15 years, you know, yeah. just, yeah, you know what I mean? So I was not an overnight sensation, as they call it. Okay. Um, yeah. it. It was something that I had worked diligently for, for 15 years to try to get established. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a difference when you, you know, the the as a solo artist at that particular time, the most people that you had played for only once in your whole career up over to that point, mm -hmm. the most that you played for was probably, I think it was about maybe 5,000 people. And that was only one time. Otherwise it was rate range at averaging 600, 800. Go from that to the first date that you do with the Gap Band is 70,000 people in a football stadium. Wow. Yeah. So, so did you have a uh, stage fright? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not at already, all. You are really prepared. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. To I, that. To I always that. felt like that I would be there. Yeah. 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 Who was your musical influences? Mm. Well, I I started out. Um. They tell me at four years old. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I came up a member of the Church of Christ, mm -hmm. and they are a cappella based uh, devotion. Yes. So uh, I loved melodies of vocals and what you could do with the voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I grew older, to start actually understanding what that was about, what music actually was, and yeah. why does it make you feel these different ways and, and lyrical content that can make you conscious and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. the, the influence that started out with me, I am very much so a diversified, influenced individual because the, the smoothness of the background vocals and vocal arrangement of the Carpenters Oh yes. The um, the funk power and 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 pretty much possession of a song by James Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, the showmanship of Jackie Wilson and Prince. Oh yeah. The um, how to take a song and literally make it your own. Marvin Gaye, Al Green, Ronald Isley, mm -hmm. and then the just tenacity of the strength of yes. funk music, the oh. Gap Band, Parliament Funkadelic, and Cameo. Those, those, that's my influence. Wow. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your, tell me about how Conrad O. Johnson also influenced oh. you. Oh, oh my God. I, I would not, I would dare to say that I would not be both the man mm -hmm. and as musically hungry and confident as I am without him. Yes. He was, he was besides, it literally goes in this order when, it, when, you, when I talk about uh, men who influenced my life the most. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. my dad, and Conrad O. Johnson. Oh, yes. That's, yes. that's, just just a tremendous influence on me. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, I, um, as, as you know, um, uh, Timothy Thompson, all the, you know, the gentlemen of the Thunder Soul uh, can attest also to um, his influence in their lives, so. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Timothy Thompson was a part of the very first group that I was uh, in. <laughs> and uh and and what a oh that's one of my soul brothers that's yes, a, he's a blessing. yeah that's close right there <laughs> <laughs> that is that is that is awesome i i i love it you know craig bogman you know gerald calhoun and, and um howard where Red yes Red reginald Red nelson passed away you know yeah. um reginald who passed away we uh yeah. that's who i was talking about father. I mean, condolences to his family. 
Yeah, that's who I was talking about that I was saying that was my writ my my co writer yeah. that passed away all in that four month five oh, month. Oh, that's what you were talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah, yes. That was such a such a shock. Yeah, Reginald uh Reginald is respond Reginald helped me write my very first song at 14 years old. He yeah. was very talented. Oh yes. And we wrote songs together all the way up mm -hmm. until his death. As a matter of fact, my new album that I'm doing uh, mm -hmm. right now, two songs that's got, that are going to be on that album, uh, he helped and and is, play, and is played on is playing on. How has gospel music influenced your life? You, um, tell me about uh, tell me about this uh, Akathera praise music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Yes, indeed. <laughs> See, you know. Um, I, I look at, at uh, once again, you know, the beginning for me, the beginning for me was unadulterated music. It was vocal. It was, mm -hmm. it was just to hear all of those voices come together and so and make one sound mm -hmm. and was just so intriguing to me. You know, I was, I was, I was like, man, how we, how do they do that? You know? And, <laughs> Then I and I start listening uh, to people uh, mm -hmm. that had such powerful voices, like you know yes. the Aretha Franklins and 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 mm -hmm. and you know and and uh, the Willie Neal from the Canton Spirituals and back oh. then and gospel, gospel keynotes and <laughs> all of those folks. You know th that gospel music, man, is just oh, uh, you, you know. It's the foundation, you know, isn't it? It's, it it's is, yeah. the foundation to, I think, all music. Really, it, it, it really is. To me, it, it, it really is. Yeah. Uh, it, it's something that, you know, that it, it's, it, it is uh, unseasonal. Mm -hmm. you, know? you, you, you play that music in all seasons. Happy, yes. sad, you know, glad, <laughs> mad. It'll, it'll bless you. <laughs> it, will, it, it, it will bless you. It is so yeah. inspiring. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It, it really is. It really is. No doubt. Oh, so what? Did the, let's go back to the Gap Band. Where I always wonder where did the Gap Band get their uh, originate their name from? Where did that name come from? Gap Band was from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. And we had um, in, in that particular period, there uh, the black community was mm -hmm. doing so well mm -hmm. uh, in at that particular time. And they created what, what they call the Black Wall Street. Uh, they were doing just, I mean, their own stores, their own hospitals, their own bank, their own, I mean, it was just really a thriving area. Mm -hmm. And that area was basically three streets, mm -hmm. Greenwood, mm -hmm. Orchard, mm -hmm. and Pine. Mm -hmm. And that's where the brothers, the Gap Band is three Blood Brothers, uh, Charlie, Ronnie, and Robert. And they were from Tulsa. And that's how they developed the actual name uh, to go about that now the world knows as Greenwood Orchard and Pine Band. And they just basically start, you know, initiated to GAP. That is. What is your favorite Gap Band song, by the way? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You ought to be shaming yourself. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's <laughs> that's really hard. Uh, you know, that's really hard. I I I could. Well, are you saying songs that I did not write or arrange or whatever, or what? What do you What do you say? Well, it doesn't. Whichever ones are your. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so kinda, okay. I know it's hard to narrow it down because there's so many. But if you just yeah. need to narrow one down or two, what would that be? Mm. It would probably be yearning for your love. Oh, that's a good one. And, and um and then I have to say the one that I wrote, I'll always love you. <laughs> yeah. So those two are my on my favorites, but I got.
Yeah. Five o'clock. Oh my God. I mean, you know, come on, drop the bomb at <laughs> early in the morning. You know, good, outstanding. Oh, God. outstanding. You know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those were all good. Whoops upside the head. Those now, come on here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed. Oh my but, God. Um, so you were num y'all were nominated for several songs. Yeah. What what song were you nominated for? Can you name one or two? Uh, yeah, well, well, Drop the Bomb was was nominated for a Grammy. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Yearning for Your Love was nominated. Oh, yeah. Uh, Outstanding, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Outstanding was nominated, and mm -hmm. then the albums were nominated. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we but we did not uh, win any uh, any of the awards, but uh, but yeah, they were they were nominated though. Well, that's a blessing to just to just be nominated, you know, to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. This That's right. Knowledge. That's right. About That's your right. new music. What are you doing now? You're doing you you did a you did a a, a funky gospel R and B song called Shake It Up. <laughs> well, shake it around. Shake, I'm sorry. Shake, shake it, it around. around. Yeah, shake it around. Uh, that's that's a song that I'm getting ready to release. Mm -hmm. uh, that this is the first single from. Uh, uh, from me, from a new album that I've done, and I had not done uh, uh, music uh, like that, you know, in its completeness or whatever, or over a decade. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I basically just ran into a, a a crossroad where I had to make a decision okay. uh, uh, to to either, uh, you know, I, I, during the course of my tenure with Gap Band, mm -hmm. I created a family. And, you know, and, and I said, uh, when my son got like around two years old, mm -hmm. um, I was just faced with, okay, are you going to be who you are ordained to be as a father and present in your children's lives or to be able to do what your father did for you, you know, make that acquaintance with Jesus the Christ give you an example, an imagery of what you should look like as a man. Uh, be there to be an example of what your daughter should look for if she's going to give it her husband. You can't do that if you're all the time gone. And I just looked at the situation and said, I will not have an earthly man mm -hmm. that will have more influence over my children than me. So I told the Gap I was going to have to retire uh, early, and I decided to just raise my children and, and be there for them. Mm -hmm. And so my last daughter graduated last year, praise God. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, indeed. Congratulations. And so now yeah. I'm back, and mm -hmm. uh, this is my first project or uh, album and everything that I would have been doing for over a decade. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited about it. And Shake It Around is yeah. the first single from that. But now I know everybody always, you know, they say, okay, shake it around. Then your mind automatically goes to drop it, drop it low. Drop it, drop it. No, it ain't drop it low. Isn't that it's dropping? dance. It, it, you know, I know you're going to be able to dance to it, but mm -hmm. the actual, it's an actual song that I'm, 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 pushing your attitude, a mindset, a okay. change of thought. I just interchanged the word turn it around with shake it around because I needed you to have energy and power because this country has been, as we see now, yes. such oh a bad way. It's such a terrible cloud over this country. Yeah. So shake it around is... The, the the lyrical content of it, and I wrote this song, how about I wrote this song almost a year or so ago? Okay. And I definitely did not know that the lyrical content would be so relevant to what's happening today. Oh, yes. it, 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 it literally says, I know you got trouble on every hand. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see the good in all this mess, mm -hmm. but God gave us another day to get it right. So put your trouble in a bubble and shake it around. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah, I love it. Yeah, so we I are excited it. about it. We are excited, and I decided that I was going to wait and, and release it on the third 
uh, Monday in February, okay. but I decided that I'm we're going to release it on January 20th on a inauguration oh, date. Oh, yeah, good, yeah. good idea. Good mm -hmm. idea. So this is going to be on all platforms. Yes, and, on yeah. all platforms. It's in association. It's it's World of Williams Entertainment mm -hmm. in association with Wolf Entertainment. Yeah. Uh, out of the south of France, and my my great friend, and uh, now uh, Helmut Wolf, we we've joined forces together, and we're going to be on all of the platforms, all available to to get that to get the record, shake it around, and also I just got off the phone with him, and uh, uh, talking about um, an all for love tour that will start will actually be filmed on May the eighth. Okay. In 16, uh, 16 countries abroad and in America. Mm -hmm. And I'll be Amazing. a part of that. Yeah, oh. I'll be a part of that. So okay. yeah, that's that's what we that's what we're ready to do. We're ready to get it. Well, I tell you, the world is so blessed to have you. And I thank you for for your talents all these years and just um, entertaining us and ministering to us. Mm. Yes, and just being yourself and uh, all the best to you and your family. Yes, indeed. And I just want to thank you again for um, showing up today and mm. being a part. <laughs> yes, indeed. When I, like I told you, when I got the word, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm moving. I'm the Jeffersons. I'm moving on up. Moving on up. Oh, look at you. Thank you so much for that. Yes, indeed. And I appreciate your work. I appreciate you and thank you so much. I, I also, you know, I, I always take the time to 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 thank all of those uh, who are with me. My Deep Am Nation uh, is my fan base. They they are just so beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. Lily is one who just does all of this stuff for me. And, and helps me to try to stay regulated because you know not being in the game for such a long time oh. I have to get back on my grind you know to mm -hmm. meet appointments and and things of that nature and mm -hmm. now I've got this global thing that's getting ready to go on so mm -hmm. I thank you Lily I appreciate it and I thank Deep Fam Nation I thank my city my hoodats, my Texans, <laughs> all of y'all, my rockets, oh, I love y'all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We who that too. Yeah, you know I mean? Yes, indeed. We are who that nation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, all the best to you and your family. And um, until next time, you know, um, maybe we'll have you back on sometime. Absolutely. I would love to come back on and tell you what the development of Shake It Around is once yes. we release it. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, you've been watching the Cindy Davis Show, and I thank you very much for tuning in. Until next time, God bless.